today's App Manager in Action webcast. We're excited to bring you this information, best practices for upgrading to App Manager 8. And I'm joined today by Mickey Schneebel, the product manager for App Manager. Say hello, Mickey. Hello, Travis. Hello, everyone. And we also have today a very special guest, Ugo Cordy, a senior consultant with our professional services team, uh, who has some very good experience with upgrading App Manager 8. We're going to talk about that a bit in a moment. But before we begin, uh, I just want to let you know that this is being recorded, and you'll get a link to the final recording after we're finished. So look forward to that. And also feel free to post questions in the chat window you'll see on the bottom right corner of GoToMeeting. We'll be monitoring that and try to get to some of those questions along the way. We'll also save some of those questions perhaps for the end. And we will follow up with any questions we don't get to via our community site. And you can see a picture of that right now. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to see the new App Manager HQ on community. We encourage you to go there for lots of great information on App Manager 8 and information on how to upgrade, information on the features. There's some great videos on there, that sort of thing. So I wanted to point out again that Ugo has spent uh, a better part of 2011 dealing with uh, rolling out our controlled availability version of App Manager 8 to customers around the country, around the world. And so his experience is really invaluable in helping us all to understand what are some of the things you want to consider when you upgrade things like architecture, things like uh, process. So we're, we're excited to have him join us today. And today's topics will include some upgrade guidelines, uh, how, how to adopt it, including there's, there's several options you have for doing the installation and or upgrade. So we'll, we'll give you some of those options and things to consider there and then follow up with our Q&A as we go along. So I will not delay us any further. Ugo, would you please take it away? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here and hopefully that uh, the information uh, that we'll be talking about will be invaluable for everyone that's on the call. Um, one of the things that I always stress and when I was working with clients uh, and getting their uh, environment up to App Manager 8 is always to review uh, the release notes, uh, read the documentation because um, in my opinion um, uh, App Manager does have um, one of the best uh, documented PDFs um, um, that ship with the product. So very uh, important that you do read the release notes. Um, we do have an upgrade and migration guide. Uh, we have an installation guide. We also have knowledge-based articles and also uh, obviously a best practice white paper. Um, hopefully that uh, you guys will be um, um, using professional services to assist you with the, the upgrade. And that's where we talk about, uh, you know, uh, the hardware that you're planning to use and uh, possibly uh, looking at the capacity. You know, are you, is your environment going to grow um, in size with respect to the number of servers? You know, these are questions that obviously we would be asking you uh, when, if you get, uh, when, when you get professional services involved with your upgrade to App Manager 8. Um, obviously, we want to uh, be involved because we want to do a pre- uh, uh, review your current environment, make sure everything's in place to get you to App Manager 8, and obviously, you know, professional services uh, will be uh, invaluable in getting you there. Okay. Yeah, and a comment on the documentation. So when you uh, take a look to the upgrade and migration guide, um, make sure you have the latest. Um, so even if you downloaded AMA just recently, uh, take a look to the extended support web pages. Um, there's a documentation area and make sure that um, you have the latest. Sometimes um, we, uh, you know, get some new information, we make some changes, and we improve our documentation, and we don't re-release App Manager for that. We, we update what's on the web, and, and you probably go there and check if you have the latest. Also with the knowledge base articles, if you have gone through the process of downloading App Manager 8 and ask, uh, answered the questionnaire, you uh, must have received a mail uh, with a KB in there that uh, will give you a great start point to see all other KBs related to App Manager 8. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so um, as Travis mentioned that, I had the pleasure of working with several um, clients um, 
in getting them to App Manager 8. Uh, one of the things that we or I recommended or professional services recommends is that you can uh, generate a jobs info report just to document what, what's currently running with respect to jobs on what servers. Um, it just gives you, um, you know, his history of the environment, you know, and especially when, when if there's changes in the, uh, the app manager administrator role, I mean, people come and go uh, in companies, it's, it's also nice to know what's currently in place before you make any changes, either, uh, you know, an in-place upgrade or, you know, a migration, which we'll talk about. Uh, one of the things that I also recommend, professional services recommend, is to, you know, get rid of unwanted performance data. So if you're not familiar with the delete old archive data, I suggest that you read up on it and you can even start grooming your current environment. Uh, it's well documented. If you have any questions, you know, you should contact tech support or even professional services. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I've seen over the years is ad hoc jobs. So many ad hoc jobs, but why are these ad hoc jobs running? So it's also a time for you to review uh, your ad hoc jobs that are deployed in your environment and just get rid of the ones that are unnecessary. For example, you know, you deploy an ad hoc job to collect data for um, you know, specific data that someone's requested, but they only wanted two weeks worth of the job, ad hoc job is still running. You know, if it's not needed, stop it, delete it, okay? And of course, before we do anything, we always back up uh, the current QDB. And if you are using Control Center, we do the same thing. We back up the Control Center database. Okay. <clears throat> now, of course, there's the upgrade prerequisite. Um, now, the cool thing is that the App Manager agent, you can actually upgrade uh, directly to 8 if you're at version 6 or 7. But I, I would assume that everyone that's listening today it's probably at version uh, App Manager 7.04. Um, we do have the AM platform update, which is uh, used uh, to install App Manager on 64-bit systems and support SQL 2008. Now, if you are planning to go to 8, um, the, the table that's in this PowerPoint is probably something that you want to uh, review. Uh, it is in the documentation. Uh, you need to ensure that the listed components are at the current version uh, on the on in the table, so that you can upgrade to eight if you want to, or migrate those components to uh, other uh, new hardware. Okay. So two comments here: uh, App Manager six is no longer supported. So uh, if you have still App Manager six agents running, would be a good time to to upgrade. Um, and also, we uh, will mention a couple of times the App Manager 7 platform update. Um, that's an App Manager 7 release that supports um, uh, platforms like uh, Windows 2008, R2, SQL 2008, and R2, and 64-bit, therefore. Um, so this release is not on the web page. You can, if, if, if you're interested in that release, you have to contact uh, tech support uh, and ask for it. Thank you. All right, one of the things that, um, uh, even today I'm at a client site, they're running uh, AM704 uh, platform update. We were talking about App Manager 8, and I said right out of the gates, you can download App Manager 8. There is a hotfix that ships with, with, uh, uh, with the App Manager 8. It's hotfix uh, 73278. If you have like six or seven or two or one QDB, you can apply it. Um, it it just gets you, um, it, it's just kind of like a, a one check checkbox that you can just check off. Okay, I, I've applied this hotfix across all my QDBs. And, um, and plus, if you do run into any issues with applying that hotfix, that gives you the opportunity to talk to tech support. I don't think you are going to run into any issues, but just in case, you know, apply the hotfix um, on your existing QDBs after doing a backup. And if the hotfix applies, hey, you're ready to go. It's one less thing that you need to do. Okay. And if you don't plan to to upgrade in the next couple of months, um, and you see there's a new hotfix for the AM7 QDB, you can use that hotfix instead, as all our hotfixes are cumulative, and it would uh, include the things from this hotfix as well. Just right. that there's no confusion. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
All right, so we're going to talk about adoption options. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me see. Anything else? Um, oh, okay. Um, what? Actually, just want to make one comment. So let's assume you do have an App Manager uh, 7 environment, and you just want to get your hands on uh, uh, to the, the new control center. Again, if you have existing um, App Manager 7 um, QDBs registered in control center, uh, one of the options, and we'll talk about it, but I'll mention now, is that you can you can get to the latest version of the control center environment, but that hotfix is very important uh, for you to apply. Okay, so all right, so here are the options. Um, you have a fresh in fresh installation. So you know this could be a brand new client that's uh, interested in App Manager and they want to go with the latest and greatest. So they do a fresh installation of App Manager 8. But we also have existing clients and they just want to start fresh. Brand new environment parallel with their existing App Manager environment. They can do a fresh install, brand new start, let's just do it clean. Okay? You have the option of fresh installation with agent migration. This was the number one choice uh, or option picked um, uh, with the clients that I worked with in getting them to App Manager 8. We're going to do a parallel implementation. We're going to do a fresh installation of App Manager 8. We're simply going to migrate the agents over to the new environment. Of course, no more history, which means unless you have uh, analysis center, um, there's no history about the data. There's no jobs. You're just starting fresh. And it gives you the opportunity to do a review um, of your existing jobs and just start fresh. Okay. Um, one of the things that I um, also want to mention is that um, in the upgrade guide, we document step by step how to how to upgrade how to migrate an agent from one QDB to another, and that if you follow the steps, um, there's nothing um, that's going to be left from the old environment that's on the agent. Like for example, you know multiple map queue map queue files, you know anything like that. Uh, that agent will only know about the management servers in the new environment. So it's been documented, the steps, and I highly recommend you review those steps. Uh, option number two is upgrade existing components. Um, same as before, just better. So you have an existing environment, and you simply want to you want to upgrade um, your um, components um, or up, your App Manager 704 environment or 7.x environment to 8. Um, third option is hey, you know what, we want to go from um, a physical environment to virtual, or we want to go from a virtual environment to physical, um, or we want to bring in brand new servers, because the servers that are currently uh, hosting the App Manager components are going to be decommissioned. We want to go with the best hardware. Then option three is what you want to pick. Okay? Or you can right. do combinations of the both. Okay? So with change horses, we're talking about change the horsepower, change your hardware, uh, not change the product, right? So um, we will not talk about the combinations, as this would definitely not fit into the one hour. If if you if you want to do one of, you know, if you want to do a combination of these things, uh, it would probably be a good idea to contact our professional service team to help you uh, with that task. Then. Thank you. All right, so option 1A is fresh installation. Um, so, hey, you can be a brand new uh, NetIQ client, or you can be an existing uh, NetIQ client, and you say, you know what, um, there's been some, you know, change in, you know, app manager administrators. We're not too sure, you know. And I actually, again, I've seen this, but uh, you just want to start fresh. Um, you know, so this is high level, the installed order, you know, the QDB, MS, your agents, and control center. And of course, the cool thing about the control center is deployment capabilities. That gives you the ability to push out um, agents, uh, modules, you know, things of that nature. Okay, and of course, you want to review any documentation that is shipped with the product so that you have a gr good understanding of, of uh, what steps to take. and um, what would what support it? Okay, so and of course, it'd be nice uh, if you get professional services involved, and we just work with you hand in hand to get you um, a, get you to App Manager Eight with a fresh installation. Okay, and we also uh, go ahead. 
and the reason we we repeat this here is it's you know your your first installation if you're new with app manager and you install app manager the installation really matters uh, it's a straightforward easy installation it can be all on one box but if you're new to app manager you might not understand what component uh, need what capacity and need what kind of resources and um, therefore we, we have seen in the past that if you don't plan your installation your first installation correctly um, you might miss some benefits from app manager or you know see some uh, performance uh, that 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 could be better so um, just make sure that when you do your installation plan ahead of time involve us uh, to help you to make sure you get the uh, most value out of app manager right and and just for example I'm at a client side they started with one hard one server and uh, it wasn't scalable so they had if they if, if professional service was involved from day one the architecture would have been uh, uh, designed or put in place so that it, it is scalable up to a number of agents and then just replicate that to um, possibly another uh, uh, app manager environment. Okay, thanks. All right. So fresh installation. Um, obviously this is a PowerPoint so these are the, the components that you would install. Um, you know the 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 uh, the management server sorry the QDB the management server you could install the agents manually um, of course you would get t tired of that so obviously you would you would bring in control center and use the control center deployment uh, services to deploy the agents uh, across uh, your production servers okay and of course if you um, you want to get professional services involved because then we we would talk about uh, you know clustering the databases and having redundancy on the management servers, you know, so that's that's things that very important to discuss um, when when you're architecturing and deploying app manager. Okay. All right, so the benefits of fresh installation, um, you want to leverage new platforms, 64-bit, uh, 2008 R2. Um, of course, you're leveraging all the brand new features of App Manager 8. Um, anyone who's currently using Control Center 7, you will definitely see uh, performance improvements, very cool features um, in Control, Cent Control Center console that ship with AM8. You can do um, ad hoc uh, management groups uh, population. You can create charts using the Control Center console. Uh, you can filter. Uh, there's a little white space bar you simply type in and then you can filter on computer names. Very cool features. Uh, consideration, uh, one of the things that you would probably want to consider is get professional services involved from day one so that the architecture is scalable and that you will not hopefully run into future uh, uh, performance issues. Okay. Okay, option B1, uh, 1B, fresh installation with agent migration. Again number one choice of, uh, of all the clients that I worked with okay, when uh, getting them to App Manager 8. Uh, zero downtime, uh, very important, some client sites. Uh, so they have parallel, I would call this a parallel implementation. Um, you would also, also want to do a fresh installation with age migration. Maybe there was a change in App Manager ownership, right? Um, um, and also that you know, you probably did the App Manager 7 implementation on your own without professional service assistance. You're running to performance issues. Okay, let's start fresh. Let's bring in the, the guys, you know, um, who work with the product and let's just do fresh. But I want zero downtime. Okay, so let's migrate your agents to uh, from App Manager 7 to App Manager 8 and then use the control center capabilities to upgrade your agents to the current version. And of course, the steps are documented and they work, okay? The install order is uh, obviously your QDB MS uh, control center, then you obviously you wanna migrate your, your agents. So you're, you're leveraging the existing agents, right? So the step, the migrating, the migrating the agents will get that agent in a virgin state, so then you can, you can import it into app or get it into the app manager aid environment, okay, and then deploy uh, uh, monitoring jobs uh, right away. Okay, so this is a little PowerPoint. So really, 
you have your, your current environment that's orange and your new environment is blue, the only thing that you're doing is you're, you're migrating the agents from the 7.x environment over to the 8. Okay? So very little downtime. Um, this is a high level um, uh, steps of migrating a 7.x a 7.x agent to AM8 uh, QDB. Again, it's documented, but obviously you want to stop the job. Um, you want to update the, um, the web service uh, registry key. So there's a KF to do that. Uh, you want to update the allow MS registry key on your agents. There's a KS for that. You want to do a cold start. We actually have a, um, a little batch um, example in the documentation. Um, you want to delete the agent from the old environment. And then you use um, the um, control center um, console in A to, to get that agent in there, um, which is a wizard that you use. You want to do a warm start. And the reason why you want to do a warm start to ensure that software inventory is being sent from the uh, AM704 agent to uh, the DWS, the Deployment Web Service. Uh, something that I just want to throw up uh, now or tell, tell everyone that in, in, in 704, a 7.x agent, software inventory was um, sent via um, HTBS. Um, it, would, it would talk to the DWS. Whereas when you, once you upgrade your agent to 8, software inventory is part of the agent MS communication flow. Okay? So the DWS, um, um, it, its role diminishes um, when you go to AM8. Um, and then the next step is uh, via the control center console version 8, you would uh, um, assign the primary MS and secondary MS. You would then create a deployment rule to upgrade your 704 agent to 8. And you would verify again that software inventory is coming in. And that's why I stress here, no software inventory equals no deployment task. So if the deployment service can't um, if it doesn't know if, if, if there's an agent on a server, it's not going to create a task to upgrade it. So it needs to know what version of the agent you have, and that's why software inventory is very important. Once you upgraded the agent, then you create another rule to deploy the WinOS module, the current version. Okay. So, Ugo, this is all in the documentation, and, and in yeah. the documentation it's even more detailed. We will also give you uh, scripts and, and ideas how to do the one start of the agent and all of this, right? So right. Um, it, it, it looks a little bit, you know, overwhelming, but it's really not, and, and we guide you through it. Right. Now, I remember um, migrating um, 100 systems, you know, within a half hour, not even. So. Uh, fresh installation with age migration, so benefits versus consideration. No monitoring downtime, obviously you're leveraging new platforms. Um, you're, you're leveraging all the new cool features of a control center. Um, obviously the software inventory is now part of the agent MS um, uh, communication flow. Uh, you're getting rid of misconfiguration, getting rid of unwanted data. Uh, you're using existing agents, and this also gives you the opportunity to go from physical to virtual or virtual to physical. Uh, consideration, um, let's see, you can obviously you lose historical data, but if you have analysis center uh, that, that's consuming the performance data, then you have the, that you have that historical data. Um, so, so there's one thing here. Uh, you, you have to you have to look into your current configuration and if you have a very sophisticated configuration, a lot of monitoring policies, a lot of right. groups and management groups and all of that and hundreds of service maps, you probably want to go with a different option as, as redoing this configuration uh, might be a big effort and, and you don't want to go through that. So um, if, if you have a straightforward, very a basic configuration of monitoring policies and everything, and you can easily export, import these things, and recreate your management groups without any problems. Might be a good solution. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, option number two is upgrade existing components. Okay, so professional service walks in. Uh, to the current uh, app manager or NetIQ client, they have an existing app manager 7.x environment. They said, hey, we want to for you to assist us with upgrading 
um, this environment. These are fairly new servers. Um, this environment's been only running for the last six, six months to a year. Uh, we are planning to go with new servers, but not now. We just want to use the existing environment. Okay, so, and and obviously, uh, you probably, uh, I'm sure you probably have have used the App Manager 7 platform update to install App Manager on on your 64-bit uh, servers. Um, and you know, we live in a real world where budget constraints uh, are reality. Um, you have the budget maybe for next year, but right now you don't, and you just want to upgrade the current uh, current app manager environment to eight because you want to use uh, you want to use the cool features of the of the the latest version of Control Center Console, um, and also you uh, there's consideration with, res with respect to constraints and customization. Um, maybe you have um, you know you have a six server deployment uh, or four of all the app manager components. You want to add another MS, but you can't. So obviously, you just want to upgrade the current environment and get professional services involved so that if there are performance issues, we can do some tweaking and tuning of the environment. Okay? And, so, and also, what I, what I said before, if, if you have that sophisticated configuration and you have lots of customizations and you don't want to move these to a new environment, Right. The upgrade scenario might be a better fit for it for you than that's. Right. So the upgrade order very simple: control center and primary QDB slash MS, um, and then any additional QDBs uh, management servers do you have? And then finally, you would upgrade uh, the agents uh, using uh, deployment server capabilities of control center. Okay. Right and. Between each of these steps from control center and then the QDBs, right. you, you can have a longer break. So you can start with number one, just control center, and keep it up for a while. Uh, there's no need to uh, do your additional QDBs, just the primary, and then you go next with your QDBs and the agents at the end. So with AIM-8, we still work with the AIM-7 agents. And if you have been on the previous webcast, I was talking about the different features you have with the different adoptions here. Um, so if you have the 7 agent but not the 8 agent, works well. However, um, the Delta Discovery feature would not be available for you then. Thank you. All right, so um, again, the table that you see here, it's, document, it's in the documentation. Um, I re highly recommend you go through the documentation, but supported platform, um, the QDB version 701, 703, uh, that includes also the App Manager 7 platform update uh, with respect to the management server component. You have to be at 701 or the App Manager 7 platform update uh, version of the MS. Um, for the version 8 uh, QDBs, um, it has to be hosted on the following um, SQL server. So 2005 standard or enterprise, uh, 2008 standard or enterprise with the appropriate service packs, obviously, and 2008 R2 standard or enterprise edition. Um, what I'm seeing across the companies is that they're going to, you know, SQL Server 2008 R2 um, standard 64-bit. Uh, okay. Um, now I don't think anyone's uh, hosting a QDB on Microsoft SQL, SQL 2000, but if you are, you need to move that QDB on a supported uh, version of Microsoft SQL Server before even thinking of getting to App Manager 8. Okay. <clears throat> so upgrade existing components, uh, again, it's a PowerPoint. Um, we have obviously the order uh, documented, uh, you know, the, um, it's, it's, it's in the upgrade migration guide. I can't stress enough that you need to review so you understand the upgrade order, okay? You don't want to upgrade one component when you should have upgrade um, the, the appropriate component before going to App Manager 8. Okay. Hey, Ugo and Mickey, uh, we do have a, a good question I just wanted to make sure it was addressed while we're still on the topic uh, of upgrade. It, the question is, um, let me scroll to the top here. They've done a seven platform update uh, and it was deployed a few weeks ago. No hardware changes can be budgeted, but they have um, little, very little data. Is there any reason to uninstall and do a clean install over upgrading? 
if if there if if there is no issue with downtime um, and the data that the very little data that they have is is of no value um, I can't see why they can't uninstall but really it's a decision that they need to make but I can't see why they can't just simply uninstall and install AM7 S or AM8 fresh um, you know as long as that their management says oh yeah you can blow away the environment you know then go for it okay thanks but also you also need to ask yourself what benefit do I get from there so do I need to change my hardware do I want to go there or not what's you know what's the easiest route for me to to get to the features I want um, so but, sorry Paul, they're uh, he, they're asking would you recommend it over upgrading it really depends it, it really depends on what situation you're in if um, if you have fresh hardware you just installed the currency pack or the platform update um, there there's no need to install again you, you want to keep your efforts low so uh, in that case it looks to me that an, an in-place upgrade might be the better choice as you don't want to go through you know the uh, configuration and everything again you just want to keep what you have already and the hardware is in place um, but okay, this is you. this is really something where where we always consider to yeah contact us uh, directly through uh, tech support or professional services and and work with us so that that you make the best choice here as there are so many so many things that that we need to know to make the right decision here. All right, so um, obviously uh, planning upgrade. Um, the 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 screenshot that you screen capture that you see here was taken from the uh, the documentation. Um, and, can't stress enough. Go ahead. Sorry. And and that is just a good example that we have improved our documentation a lot. And you have these checklists, and they're very detailed, and they link you to other documents where where you get more details. So very very helpful. Yeah, we just did a, uh, um, a migration of a QDB um, following the, this documentation, you know, so it was just invaluable. Okay, upgrade existing components, benefits versus consideration. You want to leverage existing hardware. It's fairly new hardware. Um, you want to keep the current configuration. Uh, you have your mining policies in place. You know, um, you have your reports scheduled. Um, you're satisfied with the performance. No need to go to new, with new hardware. You want to lose historical data. You know you, you can upgrade the existing um, environment. Um, considerations: um, If you're not at the current, or if you want to leverage the new platforms like SQL 2008 R2, but you're running SQL 2005, then you might as well just uh, upgrade your existing components and without changing the version of the platform like SQL or the OS. Um, no fallback other than backup and restore. Okay, so those that's the consideration of uh, upgrading versus migration. Okay. Option three, migrate to new hardware. And again, new hardware could also mean going from physical to virtual, virtual to physical, or your, you've got some Dell servers or HP and you know they're four, five, six years old and they're being decommissioned um, and you just want to go with the latest and, latest, latest and greatest version of the, the hardware um, from whatever vendor you, you currently uh, work with. Or like I said, uh, you can probably consider um, going from physical to virtual machines, which uh, I've worked with several clients doing that. Um, actually, the client that I'm currently at this week, they're all virtual. SQL is virtualized, everything's virtualized. Okay. Uh, but of course, we have other clients that strictly are physical servers. Um, obviously, when you want to migrate uh, your current environment to do new hardware, um, you need to understand the supported scenarios, and they're all documented. Okay. Obviously, we're going to be um, the power, we have a PowerPoint on migrating the QDB, migrating the control center database, and there are other um, there is the option of moving other components to new hardware like the management server. Okay. But you you get the 
the most benefit by moving the databases, right? So you oh, can yeah. leverage 64-bit and uh, better platforms, better hardware. That's where you get the most benefit by migrating these databases. We also we also have clients that their databases are on physical SQL boxes, but the MSs are on virtual machines. So, um, so the only thing that you want to migrate is to new hardware is the databases, but the MS is you keep them where they are on virtual machines. So here's a, a, a 7.x repository migration scenario. Um, you can migrate a 7.x QDB or CCDB to a new computer uh, running the following operating systems in Microsoft SQL, SQL Server um, uh, versions. And again, this is from the migration and upgrade guide. You can't go wrong. Everything is in there. Uh, before you migrate a QDB, um, um, you you could you have the option of installing an MT7.x QDB. This is the mindset. Uh, I need to say this is the mindset of previous versions of app managers when you when you migrated or moved on the QDB from um, um, like say for example even six or seven you would install uh, a 7.x QDB fresh and then do a backup restore of your 7.x QDB and restore it onto a, a, a new SQL Server. Um, so <clears throat> uh, the next uh, step would be is you would obviously restore uh, that database. Um, and the following table lists the App Manager version um, based on, sorry, based on um, 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 yeah, the App Manager versions. This is what is the expected OS and SQL version that you, you need to have. Okay, so it's all it's all documented. So, right? so, so back to your options real quick. So, so with App Manager eight, uh, you might have heard that we no longer require any binaries on the on the SQL server. So we right. can install the machine uh, the the databases remotely, and we don't touch the registry. We don't uh, lend any files. Therefore, there's the new option that instead of um, installing AIM7 first and move to your AIM7 database and then upgrade, you can just back up your database and restore the database and then do uh, the upgrade of the database without any binaries around, which will save you some time. Uh, however, you would not have the step going through 7 and maybe some people want to go through 7 first and see everything's up and running and the 7 environment is still intact on the new hardware. So we have a slide about that later just to make sure these are the two options you have. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> All right. So moving QDB to new hardware, again, this is high level. Uh, the detailed steps are documented. Um, it, you know, you would in, you would install a fresh uh, 7.x QDB um, using the M7 platform update. Um, obviously, you give it the same name as the repository you're planning to move. It's very important that the MSDT is enabled. Um, you know, sometimes I would ask the client if it is, and I, I would they would they would say yes, but I would just double check um, that it is enabled. Obviously, you close all your connections to the QDB. Your MSs need to be shut down or the service stops so that there's nothing touching the QDB. You back it up and you do the installation, you restore. Um, and now, uh, just to note that the App Manager 7 platform update QDB requires an App Manager 7 uh, update management server. So you need to have uh, one MS that's uh, installed uh, using the platform update um, because we don't support upgrading the MS. Uh, to the App Manager 7 platform uh, update version. Okay. Again, this is all documented. Okay, so you can't go wrong. Um, now, after restoring the QDB, uh, you apply a hotfix if it's not an App Manager 7 platform version. So always look. So um, you would you would check to make sure that um, the hotfix. You, well, you would call tech support and get the latest version of the hotfix. Um, and of course, you would uh, review um, the App Manager upgrade and migration guide for the detailed steps. So this is just a high level of how to move a QDB from an existing uh, hardware to a brand new new server. Okay. So Nikki and Ugo, we had a, a question about running the QDB on uh, on a VM on VMware, 
and whether that would affect the performance of uh, the ESX server and potentially other virtual machines. Have you had experience with that? Um, as I indicated, I'm, I'm currently at a client site. Everything is virtualized, including uh, the SQL server. And and you uh, manage that through through VMware, you know, by, yeah. by giving the right resources, you would make sure that uh, other machines or other VMs get not um, impacted unless right. they, they all share the same memory or sh share the same CPUs. Uh, then, yes, the, the AppMinager databases will be kind of busy and, and we would recommend not, you know, to plan any other uh, application sharing that resources with with the AppMature right. databases. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all uh, shared resources. So you obviously you have to plan it accordingly and talk to the um, the ESX team um, um, and get professional services involved because it's it's the database, the QDB is very busy, you know, especially with the number of agents that you're planning to deploy. So um, Right, and of course, we App Manager has a VMware module that can help you manage and optimize that as well. Right, right. So the one of the things that uh, we also have a uh, um, um, steps on migrating control center database to new hardware. Obviously, these are high level steps. Um, so before migrating, you would install an empty version of the 7.x control center database using the AIM7 platform update. Verify MSDTC again, very important. Um, close all the connections uh, to the control center database. Uh, you would make a note of the link server um, properties. So every time you register a QDB in control center, a link server, a SQL link server is created. Now if the, if the QDB is on the same SQL server as control center database, the link server is not created for the local SQL server. But if it's a remote SQL server, the link server is created. You would back up and restore the control center database on the new server and apply uh, the hotfix and recreate the link servers. Okay, but of course uh, these are high-level steps, and you would review the detailed steps in the upgrade and migration guide. <coughs> so this is an alternate. Alternate. This is this is what um, um, was mentioned before. With AM7, there's no more binaries. Okay, so there was a mindset before eight is that oh I need to install a fresh QDB because of all the binaries, right? We had extended store procedures; they're all gone now, right? They're part of the QDB. Um, so this is high level of what you would do. Um, recommendation: if you want to go directly to AM8, stop services, backup databases, restore databases on new hardware. You run certain SQL queries to update appropriate tables. Again, this is in the migration guide. Uh, perform an in-place upgrade to AM8 and run uh, additional uh, SQL queries. And but the best thing is there's no need to install AM7 before uh, AM7 uh, uh, database. Okay. Yeah, all the binaries. So the you binary, yeah. you would have no binaries. If this is just the database, you would have no binaries at all on that right. machine. So your DBA should be happy that it's just simply a, a database that's uh, being deployed or installed via remotely. So, um, and again, the extended store procedures are gone, so which is really cool. Okay, so moving a management server to new hardware, that is an option, right? I'm sorry, uh, real quickly yeah. we had a question. Is there any benefit to having the CCDB installed in its, to its own instance of SQL Server? Uh, I would recommend that if you're, if you have multiple QDBs, um, a big bank that I worked with, uh, they have, we're planning to move their control center database to its own instance of SQL. Uh, plus, we recommend that because um, tempdb is utilized a lot. Um, so if you have multiple databases and a single instance, and that temp tempdb is going to get hit hard. Okay, so very important to know that. 
Right, and make no mistake, App Manager databases are really busy. You know, if you get data points in and events, and they they sync between the QDBs and uh, control center. If, if your environment is you know more than one QDB, you, you should put the the CCDB on its separate instance. Make sure it gets the best performance, and you have no delay in getting events and status information in control center. Yeah, because everyone should know that when you open up the control center console, it connects to the control center database. It does not connect to the QDBs, but there's syncing going on between control center and the QDBs that are registered within the console. Okay. All right, so this is high level steps of uh, moving a management server. Um, you configure all your agents to, to communicate to anonymous MS. Uh, you install the management server component using the AM7 update platform on the new hardware, and you would point it to the QDB you're planning to migrate. Um, on the new server, you would apply the App Manager agent uh, hotfix uh, 72616. Um, and then for each agent that communicates with that management server, you would run the set allow MS KS to configure the MS parameter with the new management server name. Okay, And then you would run the set primary MS to update the management server name. Right? And then on the old uh, hardware, you would simply uninstall the management server components. But of course, these are high-level steps. You want to uh, review the upgrade and migration guide for the detailed steps. So this is a little PowerPoint. Migrate to new hardware. So obviously, you move the control center database and QDB to the new servers, and um, and then you can do the rest of the components. Migrate to new hardware, benefits, considerations. Obviously, if you want to leverage new platforms, um, keep existing configuration to fall back, um, and no loss of historical data. And of course, there is some downtime. All right, But it all depends if email actions are configured to occur on the AM agent or the MS. If it's configured on the agent, then someone will still be alerted on issues um, you won't see the events coming in, but at least you get an email saying critical service is down, especially if you set up uh, agent um, email actions. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Important notes. All right, so um, before you install the AM Web Component, that is version the AM Web Component that shipped with App Manager 8, you want to ensure that ASP is installed. Okay? Um, if you're a current user of uh, App Manager Performance Profiler, uh, the modified version, please contact tech support uh, to see uh, about uh, getting the latest version that will be supported with 8. If you are uh, a current Analysis Center user, there is a hotfix uh, that you can download and um, that would hide these hidden views that get created um, when you start, okay, well, in Control Center, when you create a management group and you do an ad hoc, it creates a hidden view. Well, these hidden views show up in an Al Center console, so this hot fix fixes that issue, right? You don't want to see these hidden views um, pop in your in, in your AC console. Right? So it's really, so it's really cosmetic. It it, it doesn't yeah. break your right. analysis center, and right. and this hot fix comes with the App Manager 8 package. You can find it under related components. It's uh, unfortunately not on the web as we're working on a new hotfix uh, for AC which will uh, include this hotfix. So um, the AC hotfix is currently only in the App and J package. Okay, thank you. Uh, another thing to, to keep note is that when you register a QDB, so the screenshot that you see here is actually a screenshot of Control Center Console when you register a QDB. Uh, FQDN is not supported, so you're going to have to use the NetBIOS name of the SQL server that's hosting the QDB. Very important. But you can use FQDN uh, when you're logging into the console. Okay, so, so I'm showing you a screenshot of the Control Center 8 login screen. You can see the server name is specified via uh, FQDN, but when you're registering a QDB, uh, it's a NetBIOS name. Okay. 
Um, there's one more thing I'd like to note here. It's about SQL 2000. So with AppManage 8, we no longer support SQL 2000, but even with AM7 and the latest hard fixes coming with AM8 and going forward, uh, we no longer support SQL 2000. Um, it's, it's also not supported by Microsoft. It's a very old version. There are many, many issues with that. Um, if you're still on SQL 2000 and you're facing performance problems, please contact us as this mainly has to do with SQL 2000. So just keep in mind um, that's something we haven't uh, mentioned yet in, in this slide, but um, you saw that from the support matrix, the, the environments you can move, there was no SQL 2000. And I think we're pretty much done with the slides now. And of course, you would, uh, if you need assistance, um, you know, reach out to NetIQ and get professional services involved to get you up to App Manager 8 as quickly as possible. Thank you for your time. So, Travis, do we have any more questions? Yeah, there's, you know, a lot of the questions uh, are focused on this uh, topic around virtualization and, and some of our recommendations there. So. Uh, some of them are very similar, so I'll, I'll ask a few of them. Um, one of them is, you know, it, do we have a strong recommendation about putting the QDB on physical versus uh, virtual infrastructure? Uh, I, I probably can guess that the answer is going to be it depends, but how, how would you address that? Um, I, it, uh, it, uh, well, the first question I would ask them is, um, what's your history of virtualizing um, SQL. Are you guys comfortable? Um, do you have existing databases that are hosting, sorry, do you have existing SQL um, virtualized that are hosting databases that have high um, um, transaction rates? And are you getting the performance that, that you want um, by virtualizing SQL? If not, there are, I mean, there's other clients that says, you know what? Yeah, we've heard that you can virtualize SQL. Our, our stance is, you know, we're, we're going to stay with physical, but everything else that we can virtualize, we will do that. So I've been to client sites where SQL is physical, everything else is virtual. Uh, one example is, is a bank that I've been working with, um, all physical SQL, everything else is virtualized. Management servers, you know, deployments, uh, deployment servers, um, but when it comes to SQL, it's it's on a physical box. Um, at, at this client that I'm, I'm at, um, everything is virtualized, even analysis center. The OLAP server is virtualized. The SQL server that's hosting the data marts is virtualized. It all comes down to making sure that uh, the necessary resources are there so there's no bottlenecks caused across uh, uh, all the virtual machines. So. So we have no strong recommendation there. Uh, we have tested both physical and virtual, um, and uh, we have seen uh, customers being successful with uh, both approaches. Um, so there's there's no strong recommendation. Okay, thanks, guys. And uh, while we're addressing some of these questions, I wanted to point out next month's webcast is planned to be one where we would like to have one of our customers present their implementation of App Manager 8 and talk about their experience. So if you're interested in doing that, I've put my email address, travis.green at netiq.com, in the chat window, and I'd love to hear from you, and we'll set that up for next time. All right, uh, another question that we had come up is, what is the difference between deployment service and deployment web service? Are they supposed to be on separate servers, or can they be on the same server? I can answer that. The, you, you only have one DWS, and the DWS is there to host all of the packages or the MSIs. You can have multiple deployment servers across your environment, uh, but the DWS is, uh, is uh, hosted on an IS server, whereas the deployment service <coughs> is a great component to virtualize. You can use an existing virtual machine, or you can stand up a virtual machine and install the deployment service. And that's all it is, is a service that is used to, when you create a rule in Control Center, the deployment server will analyze that rule and create the appropriate task that you would approve, and it will go out and do whatever you told it to install, an agent, an upgrade, uh, a module, you know, whatever. So you would have one DWS. So yes, to answer your question, you would have one server uh, that has both the deployment service 
and the DWF, but then you can actually have other um, virtual machines or physical boxes that just have the deployment service. So when you're creating your, your rule, you, you will notice that there's a drop-down list. So if you have more than one deployment server, the drop-down list becomes active and you can pick whatever deployment server you want. So you probably want to have a deployment server that's closest to your target machines. Okay. Okay, thanks, Ugo. We have uh, another question about some migration uh, scenarios here. In this case, they're going to be migrating App Manager 7 uh, QDBs to new hardware uh, or potentially to a virtual machine. How would they know whether to install App Manager 7 and then upgrade to 8 on the new machine or whether to just install a, a fresh install on App Manager 8 on the new machine? Wait, when would they know which approach to take? Yeah, I, I think the, the question is, is which approach would we recommend in terms of um, they're trying to decide. It sounds like they've got a couple of questions here. They're trying to decide between putting it on new hardware or a new virtual machine and then whether it makes sense to install App Manager 7 on either the physical or virtual machines and upgrade to 8 or just to in, do a, a fresh install of AM8 on the new machine and then I would assume migrate over settings? I would, in my opinion, based on what I've done with other client sites, I would do a fresh install of App Manager 8 on the new servers and just simply migrate your agents and um, very little downtime. You know, you can have your, you have your, you have a parallel implementation you, if you have monitoring policies or KSGs in your old environment, you can simply recreate them in the new, apply the policies, and as, as the agents come in, the jobs get deployed, and you're up and running again. So that would that, that be my recommendation, unless, unless they simply want to um, say, okay, um, we're just going to take an existing QDB because it has all the jobs, and we don't want to do many migration, then you have the option to simply um, migrate your environment to the new hardware and then then do an upgrade. All right, fantastic. Uh, as of right now, I don't show any other questions that we haven't addressed, so I'll, uh, I'll leave it open for one more second here in case anybody wants to send something in. But uh, while we're waiting for any final questions, Ugo, Mickey, any, any last words or do you think we've covered it? I think Uber nailed it. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like we're uh, about at the end of our time for today anyway, and we thank you all for attending. And as I mentioned, we'll be forwarding on the recording and addressing the, the questions again on our community site. So check us out there, and I hope you have a great week, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thank this you. This concludes today's session.